without any coordination with the police department, because we were originally told there were probably going to be a couple of locations, and later on we find out there's 12 locations, and yet we were never brought into this at the, the, at the beginning. Last Saturday, the Austin American Statesman did an article about how they're practicing taking over police departments in Chicago. In fact, I've got a copy of that. I can give you a copy of that after the interview. I should have brought it up from my car. I just remembered. Um, that's one thing that some cities I've heard have had reservations about. They call it touring the police department, but they actually uh, practice dynamic entry and other things at the police departments. Um, I heard that they were planning to do this in Houston, that, that they've already done some training along with the Marines and other forces of the military. Um, have you ever heard of anything like this before? No, I have not. Uh, they did offer to allow our SWAT teams to do training with them in these particular exercises, but, you know, our missioners are different. Theirs deals specifically with international type situations, our deals with local situations, and if an incident were to occur in this country, it would be local law enforcement, the FBI, and others that would deal with that. Whereas so, the Delta Force is purely kill the terrorists. But what, whatever it is. I, I'm not so sure what it is, but it's at an international level, and so our missions, our tactics are somewhat different. And, and I'm very proud of the SWAT team that we have. I think we have one of the best in the country. We do a lot of training for other agencies, and I think that we have the skills and the, the expertise to deal with those situations. I heard it quoted that the mayor said that he didn't appreciate the dishonesty of the Delta Force. I was curious, we called the mayor's office and they, um, Jackie O'Donnell, I believe her name, she told us that you were the mayor's spokesman on this. Uh, can you tell us exactly why uh, the mayor would use such strong language and call them dishonest? Well, I think that there were various approaches. For example, when I, I originally said no several weeks ago, matter of fact, a couple of months ago, but no was never no. And then no was never no. Uh, end of runs were done around to various community leaders. I had someone... Excuse me, sir. You're saying that they ignored the police chief and under our Constitution, you're the same as the sheriff and you run the city or the county. You're telling me that Delta Force was ignoring your order? Well, I don't want to say they ignored it, but in a roundabout way, yes, because what they would do once I said no, they went to various individuals in the community to bring pressure to bear to get me to change my mind. president just add puppet then vote and repeat every four years Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. The next great battle in defending the principles of freedom and true individuality won't be fought against authoritarianism emanating from the state. It will be fought against authoritarians imposing their dogma through culture. This is a culture war. Shit just got real. And the more progressivism demands absolute obedience to its doctrine, the more regressive it reveals itself to be. Progressivism is the new Puritanism, and that's why many traditional left-wingers are abandoning it in droves. Throughout history, society has persecuted, maligned, and silenced truth-tellers. Those who dared challenge the consensus faced oppression from the state. But modern-day persecution takes different forms. Prime amongst them is peer pressure and ostracism, Given their natural proclivity for intolerance, progressives are more likely to socially shun anyone who doesn't parrot their rhetoric. Amongst younger generations, this has functioned as an efficient means of ensuring that libertarian and conservative perspectives on the major social issues of our time remain on the fringes. Somehow we've been browbeaten into thinking that challenging the progressive consensus on any issue will leave us estranged alienated and miserable. Even though the facts show that liberals are unhappier, poorer, and despite their obsession with virtue signaling, far stingier than conservatives when it comes to donating to charity. I'm triggered. But the progressive establishment has a problem because contrarianism is becoming cool once again. Politically, we've shifted to the left to such a degree that the hunger for non-conformist thought and opinion is raging. I want the truth! And whether you agree with him or not, that's why Trump has become so popular. And it only makes common sense. That's why third wave feminism is cratering, while a movement that has come to be known as cultural libertarianism is soaring. Fewer and fewer people are resonating with the progressive mantra. People are sick to the back teeth of being told what to think. They're tired of progressives telling them what to feel about absolutely everything. What opinions they need to adopt to earn social brownie points from their trendy liberal friends. They've had it with the unbridled imposition of political correctness and cultural relativism by the thought police. Classical liberals are now so horrified by what the modern left has become that they're no longer comfortable describing themselves as left wing. We are just constantly hounded by the politically correct assholes out there who want to turn this country into a, a place that I don't want to live in. They've had enough of progressives resorting to censorship and authoritarianism to shut down debate. Progressivism is a movement which depends on the deliberate obfuscation of facts and objective reality for survival. But in so doing, progressivism has revealed its true face. A wasteland of enforced cult-like dogmas, allied with ruthless intellectual intolerance and the elimination of all dissent. But a new social movement is rising, 
an intellectually honest revolt, which places at its core a renewed reverence for objective reality. A movement which rejects the failed tenets of postmodernism. I'm a human being, god damn it! My life has value! A movement which repudiates the pseudo intellectual notion that there is no objective truth. Conservatism is the new counter culture, and it's now poised to banish progressivism to the ash heap of history. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, today we're the Big Three East. This is in Deland, Florida, right outside of Daytona Beach, Florida. Now, today what's going to happen is there's going to be a whole lot of the top gun manufacturers out here giving briefings and then letting journalists who work for various different magazines that are pro-Second Amendment to come in and have a chance to shoot those guns. But what we want to do is we kind of want to hijack this event. We want to use this event to show all the people out here, have a chance to speak to the manufacturers and talk about important issues that are in the news right now. The fact that these mass shootings keep happening and when they do happen, there's not a large mass of people who are scared of guns. What actually happens is people go in masses to go buy large amounts of guns which completely goes against the narrative that the mainstream media keeps portraying in the White House, saying that they want stricter gun control. It's completely ridiculous. Whenever something like that happens, people open their eyes and go, you know what, I don't want to be that victim. Gun-free zones or kill zones, I want to have a chance to defend myself. That's what the Constitution is all about. The Second Amendment gives us that right. That's that permit to be able to protect yourself, your property, and your family. And that's what we're here for, to have a discussion, open a dialogue with the people who actually make these manufacturers because Hillary Clinton just came out and said that she wants to hold the gun manufacturers responsible in the case of a mass shooting. So whatever guns were used in the shooting in Oregon, she wants to allow the families of those victims to be able to go and sue the manufacturer who made that. That's ridiculous. Why can't we sue every kind of car company every time there's a DUI, something like that, someone who's lost someone from that. More people die from traffic accidents than these mass shootings that happen. The only reason it's even talked about that much is because everyone has a smartphone now. Everyone has the capability to upload. Media is just huge now. There's no more shootings now than there were a long time ago. This stuff is the same thing continuing on. You just now have more coverage of what's going on and you have a lot of the stupid sheep out there who see it and they regurgitate it and they believe it and think that that's how it is. So we're here to bust down those walls and debunk this whole gun control thing that's going on and show you how this can be fun to come out, how it's great, empowering, and part of our American culture to go out and shoot guns, to have a weapon on you to protect yourself. Because like I said earlier, College campuses are gun-free zones for the most part. And what is that? A soft target. Charlie Hebdo attack, soft target. They always go after the soft target. I guarantee you're not gonna have a shooter go into a situation where everyone is packing a gun. So everything that we've talked about for the last few weeks, we're gonna, it's all gonna culminate. We're gonna get out here. We're gonna speak with the manufacturers, the shooters, all that, and we're gonna give you guys pro-freedom, pro-liberty stories, and bring you up to date on what's going on in the gun community. More families victimized, more average citizens President Obama may or may not personally offer his condolences to because he is too busy pleading his case to eliminate our constitutional Second Amendment right to protect ourselves and our communities. Pew Research's July 2014 poll, The Demographics and Politics of Gun-Owning Households, found that about 6 in 10 gun household members, 64%, say they often feel proud to be an American. In contrast, about half, 51% of other adults say this. There exists a constitutional mindset and reason for owning a weapon in the United States. The United States ranks numero uno in gun ownership, dominating at 88.8% per 100 residents, according to 2014 numbers from the small arms survey based in Geneva, Switzerland. A group staffed by experts in security studies, political science, law, international public policy, developmental studies, economics, conflict resolution, and sociology. These are the people pushing the international policies to agendize constitutional freedoms we as a nation require in order for our republic to operate. And the media spin on the coverage is always the same. Who cares who the shooter was in Oregon? 
Why should we? Our immediate and only reality-based concern should be for the families and communities that need to be protected by the next incident, whether it's three months or three years from now. If we could just all pay attention to the numbers. Last year, Breitbart reported...